Hello everybody! Oh, this is a fun one. It's so close to home. Literally across the street is the city of Beaverton. This was not a fun thing to see. And it was also weird how I found out about it. Mayor! Denethy Doyle. Dennis Doyle, as in Denny Doyle is always what he went by. Ugh. Mayor of Bucktooth Loserton for 12 years! Apparently you can serve unlimited successive terms as Beaverton City Mayor. To me, this seems like a problem. That effectively makes you dictator or emperor of monarch of a city. That's not cool. So, he pleaded guilty, as you can tell, to child porn charges. Ugh. So he pleaded guilty to possession of child pornography, a felony that precludes him from holding public office or voting during any period of incarceration. Federally, it's permanent. In Oregon and it's either 20 or 21 other states, it's only during your incarceration, which I find to be kind of weird, especially for this kind of stuff. So, he possessed digital material containing child pornography, including images depicting minors under 12, between November 2014 and December 2015. Several of the images included children who had been identified as sexually exploited minors by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, according to prosecutors. One thing that I can tell you for sure is it means that he is directly involved and has been directly involved with child sex trafficking. 100%. It's always a guarantee. If they're found in that database and it's somebody in that position of power, especially for that long, with those pictures that are identified really quickly by that system... It means that they have direct connections to the people who are running the child sex trafficking, if not doing it themselves. And there's a creepy correlation, which is that he actually founded in 1993, a year before I was born, he founded in 1993 something called the Westside Metros. That's a, a soccer league, youth soccer club, that uh, leads 30 boys and girls soccer teams. 30 boys and 30 girls soccer teams. Soccer teams have what? I think it's 18 or 20 man rosters or something like that. So that is scary because that's 60 times 20, say. That's a lot of minors. That's a lot of kids for a child, for a pedophile basically. And potentially somebody who trafficked children as well. That's why it bear, bears mentioning this because when it guarantees that, when the database has hits on, like, half of the children that you have, child porn that you have, the children in the child porn that you have on your in your possession, and you're in a position of power like this consistently for a long time, that's what that equates to, is, like, this is the perfect, and I hate saying it this way, it's the perfect pool to pull from, pool for, to, pull, to pull from, of children to be able to give to your connections who actually do the trafficking and or for yourself to do the trafficking if you're involved in it directly in that way. It's not good. And sure, they say he uh, was involved as vice president of the club, and according to the club president, he was an administrative role with the club and a financial advisor, and he did not have contacts with the kids of the club. Sure, he says that, I doubt it. Plus... It doesn't matter anyway. If you're in an administrative position, you're inevitably going to be seeing pictures and all the stuff of these kids anyway. You're going to definitely know the contacts, that is, the parents of these children, guardians of these children as well. It makes it way too easy for him to be able to have direct connections and contacts to be able to pull that off or give the information to his contacts in the child sex trafficking rings, groom and try to potentially get to a point, including the parents, they try to get to a point where they can actually get these kids exploited. It's not a fun time, man. Also, this is such a, a telling, but a really creepy, creepy sight. So, his wife is more than happily sticking with him. And clearly she does not seem to be in denial, because she's walking right and step, step with him, supporting him all along the way. That says a lot to me. Like, she's got to have some sort of involvement, too. That That's not... A good thing at all. Yeah, and he's gonna, he's been completely out of custody without an ankle bracelet or anything, uh, and he will be until January 24th. And I think it was March of this year is when he got uh, arrested for it, which is 
just like, what the fuck, man? And then, yeah, his defense lawyer. I mean, like, you're going to actually defend this person? Obviously, he was caught with it. He was caught red-handed. Which is why he gives the quote as he's exiting the courtroom. We make mistakes. Yeah, that you make that kind of mistake? Nah, that... No, you don't get the right to say that. Nope. You don't get any fucking sympathy for that. Of course, since he's a, he was a puppet for so long, like he is, he's going to get a special unit where he's going to be protected from that, which would be so stupid, I think. And then this is stupid to me, is that it's predictable, but it's stupid. So his defense lawyer only wants the one year one day, which would effectively allow him to serve less than a year in custody. A year and a day is a minimum prison term for a federal felony conviction, or felony conviction. In the federal system, only sentences exceeding a full year, I'm assuming in custody, allow prisoners to obtain early release for good behavior. So, in other words, he doesn't want early release, but it's also trying to minimize the amount of time, maximum amount of time he can spend in there. It's royally wrong and fucked up if your lawyer is going to do that same thing. I get it's their job. But I feel like even more so when it's a woman, especially of her age, it's, again, really creepily telling about that person and whatever firm they're a part of. Because it's, you wouldn't do that either. You'd go, you'd know what your, your normal option would be for defense, which is to get the least option. But instead, what you'd probably do is you take it a step or two from that more into actually longer term sentencing. Because at least then, you're still sticking to your morals and ethics while also, you know, technically defending and getting the, the lesser sentences. It might be a step or two from the least sentence, but it's still a lesser sentence. So technically, you're still doing that job while also sticking to your morals and ethics. Uh, the government's going to recommend a five-year term of supervised release with the follow any prison term, which makes some sense may argue and they probably will if she's already doing this then she's going to be doing that too inevitable i'm sure it's good that you have to register as a sex offender mark that as yet another one in the freaking state of oregon because there's and in, in the northwest part of oregon because holy shit north valley really oregon has by far and has for i think longer than been alive actually has had the highest amount of registered sex offenders and the highest amount of unregistered sex offenders in the entire country at all 50 states. Oregon's always had the highest. Like I, like I said in uh, my video of Oregon is a living hell for the dis or for the not dispossessed but for the disadvantaged, I pointed out near the end that I could give a long, long ass list of where Oregon is tops in every negative category that nobody wants to be tops in. And Oregon is always in top three or top five for those things. And they're always rock bottom and things that you want to be in uh, at the top of. It's, it's brutal, man. So a single criminal charge from a criminal information. I'm, I guess it says Doyle criminal info in the URL, so I'm assuming it means that it's cr from criminal information on himself. Uh, he won't be allowed to possess a firearm, vote, or hold pu uh, public office. And this is where it gets to that point. So Oregon is one of 21 states, so it's 20 other states, where they forfeit their voting rights or right to hold public office only while incarcerated. This is a case where that law is stupid. I understand its premise, and it makes sense under, I feel like, a lot of con uh, instances, but it does not make sense for sex offenders at all to be able to do that. You should throw the book at sex offenders, especially child sex offenders. That is just so fucked up to me that they're like, no, all. And it's like, that's going to be a problem. You know, I, you know, I'm absolutely have a problem with that. You know, it's, it's just a big problem. So yeah, the predictable, no direct or indirect contact with anyone under 18, that including his grandchildren, which are between the ages of 5 and 14, unless he received permission from a pretrial supervision, and he's not allowed to possess, use or possess any computer, electronic media with internet access, including cell phones, without prior approval. And he must allow random or regular monitoring of his computer use. He was also ordered not to affiliate with any organization or volunteer group that would put him in contact with anyone under 18. Go figure. Here's the, the other drive. 
They plan to seek the forfeiture of at least one 64 gig Lexar USB thumb drives, which means that they know that he has even more on there. And they know he does. Which is a lot again. One of the things I wanted to mention about this, okay, because this is really an important thing. Especially with again, the fact that half of the half of the children who ended up getting hits on the, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's hit list. So in other words, it had hits in their database for half of the kids that he had in the child porn thumb drive that they have, that he pleaded guilty to having. It goes perfectly in tandem with this. If it has hits in those databases, it guarantees if you're in a position of power like he was for so long, city commissioner and especially mayor, it ensures and guarantees that he has direct connections and always has his direct connections for a long time with genuine child sex trafficking and traffickers. He has those connections. He knows the people who are doing that. At least a good amount of them around here. Going hand in hand with that is how intensively corrupt the city of Portland's and the county of Multnomah, so the Multnomah County's judges all are. And even a lot of their lawyers are. They are so royally corrupt and they have been for so intensively and fucking long, including on literally countless things, but especially on this specific topic and this specific thing, the sheer amount of kids who have been exploited, who have been trafficked, who have been murdered, who have been abducted, gone missing, everything that goes to court in these places because they figure out who it is or they figure out what's happened or negligence or whatever else that's associated with it that can get you a court case. These motherfuckers, the mass majority of these cases, some have been sitting for 20 plus years in litigation and haven't gone anywhere. Others have been slammed, had the door slammed shut on them by these judges, these courts, and these lawyers. It's relentless. You can go downtown Portland, and every so often around Pioneer Square or other places like that, you will hear people with a little PA system that are parents of kids who went missing, got trafficked, had some sort of extra, other exploitation or sexual crime, or and or have gone missing. And a lot of times these are people who have been dealing with this for over 10 years, sometimes over 20. And you'll hear them talking about it. And you can engage with them and they'll tell you exactly what I just said. It's an extremely corrupt organization, cabal, cult, whatever you want to call it, at the top in Oregon when it comes down to this stuff. And it includes the police too, obviously. They are just as involved. Leaf Blower, thank you for guys commentating and putting your two cents in. It's such a problem. And of course, that's where he was. Yes, it's a federal court, but it's still Multnomah County. It's still Portland. It still involves police. And I feel like this also is another case of, you know, FBI ain't gonna do much because they've never done much. They don't wanna break up these cabals. If they did break up these trafficking rings, like actually go hard at it, find and identify everybody, and then start breaking him up, we wouldn't be dealing with this this far down the line. It's been such a problem for so fucking long. They would break up Hollywood. People are like, oh, it's a far right talking point. No, it's genuine. Hollywood's by far the most fucked up, I think, of them all. Like, it's it's couldn't be more clear and obvious. I mean, like, you talk to somebody who's trying to just simply get in as a backup dancer, so a dancer for the first time ever is a job, and they're trying to get in as a backup dancer for even a B-list Hollywood musician, they have to do some royally fucked up and weird ass shit, sexual shit, in order to even be considered for the position. No matter, it doesn't matter their talent, it matters the sexual favors that they'll do. That says everything you'll ever need to know. You hold a position of power and money of some kind, this is the kind of shit you're usually hiding from. And you're using it to protect yourself. It's at least a perception and a thought that should be genuinely weighed and considered. And never dismissed. Because likely it is this is a factually correct statement I just made. So I had never heard of the National Pulse before. This was the first one I clicked on. And because this is the first one I saw it. Which was from somebody I've never heard of. It was not a media member or anything like that. It was some random person I believe. 
uh, and so I didn't do nothing about it, found this, and I'm like, that's not fun. <laughs> like, okay, so it has its own slant. They're independent, supposedly, but obviously they have a strong political bias and leaning. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something that I'm just like, eh, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> but it doesn't make the article and the things that they're saying any less relevant. This is the first thing that caught my attention in this one, right? And immediately, when I realized that, I believe it's this open secret first uh, place, they also shared, the fact the first one they shared was not this one, it was above this. They shared a, the Oregon Live article we just looked at. I was thinking that, <clears throat> and I clicked on the Oregon Live article, assuming that they weren't going to mention this at all the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And I was really surprised that they did mention it. Of course, they're also, in this one, they're putting the political affiliations and the political nutshots, pun only half intended, uh, into the whole thing. Because the fact that, oh, he's a Democrat, and clearly this is a Trump uh, thing. So yeah, he basically, they're saying is that he's uh, he was a big donor to Biden. I didn't even hear about this before. That's interesting. That has not publicly circulated much, has it? Except for obviously probably in this circle. Did I ask your opinion? Jesus, Chopper. Way too close to home. You know, and obviously I lived in Beaverton for quite a while. I was part of the Beaverton School District for quite a while. It's, it's not a fun time. Plus, clearly he's had perpetual direct, you know, contact and interaction with minors, which is not a fun time. It's, it's, it's an uncomfortable realization, or not realization, but an uncomfortable fact that you have to grapple with. Or if he had this, you know, his, his possession, this child pornography, he clearly has connections to child sex traffickers. And he's always had direct connections and control and administrative, you know, positioning with organizations that are all about children. How can you trust that? Like, how can you trust he wasn't doing that and forming them also because he wanted to give his connections not himself, that for sex trafficking. It, it, it's just, it's a disturbing fact to, to have to grapple with, especially when it's so close to home. Again.